ハローエブリニアン。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。ハワイユーファインサンキュー。And I'm not into turn based games. What I'm trying to say is that this was shaping up to be a fucking disaster, but I had the time of my life with this game. The main story was great, the combat is actually surprisingly fun, the characters were, uh. Hot spring dumplings. Interesting. Despite having an absolute blast with the game, the ending left me with a few mixed feelings. And it's all because of this guy. This is Ultura, the final boss of the main story, and in my opinion, he is incredibly underrated. I feel like Ultura did not get the full love that it deserved, and if you've played Stories 2, you probably see where I'm going with this. But regardless, let's have a chat about that. I was initially led to believe that Ultura would have been similar to an Akarkos, and that is because initially the game refers to these massive worm like creatures as Ultura. And technically speaking, They're not wrong. You see, Ultura's birth cycle is really unique. You know how Xenojiva hatches and then sheds its skin multiple times until it turns into Safijiva? Well, Ultura here takes a little longer to cook. In its early days, Ultura remains in its cocoon underground and it creates these worm like tentacles to fetch prey on the surface. Eventually, it reaches the maturity it needs to leave the baby crib and establish dominance. And that's the thing I love about this monster. This creature is a menace before it's even. Even born. Now that we've covered its origin, let's take a look at some other reasons as to why I love this giant moth meme. Ultura looks different from most elders, with the biggest discrepancy being its massive fucking wings. Oh, and it can also grow more wings, like how, how the, the fuck? Jokes aside, I love how mystical Ultura looks, and it combines this nice black and white mix with some really cool looking horns. Claws and wing patterns. Plus, the location where you fight it and the lighting there, it just makes it look just so glorious. Its fight also illustrated size and power pretty well. I mean, we're not talking about a traditional hunt because this is a turn based game after all, but it's very exciting nonetheless. Ultura's final phase is all about preparing Monster Hunter equivalent of an atom bomb. It's a DPS check where it's building up a nuke and you have to deal enough damage so it combines a nice mixture of tension and excitement. I, I don't know, I just liked it. So if I'm here singing its praises, then how come I think Ultura has a problem? If it were up to me, I would fight this bad bitch over and over and over and over. But I can't. Not unless I start a brand new playthrough. That's right, in the story mode, you can only fight Ultura once. Also, it literally has. No gear. And I know that this is on purpose. Stories 1 apparently has the same thing with its final boss, and the reasoning behind this is that you've beaten the legendary dragon and therefore it doesn't need to return. But I find this to be pretty confusing. Monster Hunter's core gameplay cycle is to repeat hunts to your liking, either for grinding gear or for just experiencing them, and with Ultura, You don't get any of this. The experience is quite thrilling, and Ultura itself looks amazing. So you better be soaking up that experience, boy, because you're only seeing this bad bitch once. I personally find it really weird that Story Series has this tradition of only allowing the final boss to show up once, plus, the reason behind it is just a bit. Odd. Just think about it. We can't hunt Ultura because it's supposed to be this one of a kind elder dragon, right? But then wouldn't be the same case for monsters like Xenojiva, Yamatsukami, Dalamador, etc. I think I speak for everyone when I say that having the option to fight Ultura again and again would bring us no grief at all. And I know that we're not talking about a traditional Monster Hunter game, but the core gameplay of Stories 2 and just Monster Hunter in general is. Pretty much the same, where you fight the same monster over and over to grind for its gear, if you so wish. You're not forced to hunt every monster in any title, but the option is still. There. Add this to the fact that this beautiful monster doesn't have gear, and you're bound to be left like me, just longing for more. And when you start thinking about how amazing Ultura gear could have looked, you're bound to be like me and go on Google Images only to find some sort of reference that someone made and get incredibly disappointed. Because we could have had this. Regardless, I say it's a great day when your main complaint about something is I wish there was more of it. Ultura is awesome, but wildly underrated by its own makers because we only get to hunt it. Once and it comes with no gear whatsoever. Also, no Ultura baby.
Why would you do this to me? The community is not happy about the lack of baby Altora. You hear me, Jono? I just did your job for you. I'm joking, you're the best community manager you could have asked for. Please don't kill me. After Espinas has made it onto Rise and Sunbreak, there is always hope that Altora could make it into Wilds, but I'm not hopping on that Copium train. So what do you think? Have you ever had a monster that you think deserved better? Let me know in the comments. That's all for me today. Stay safe, and until we meet again.